Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Hey, okay, honey. Now, Fat Joe has been getting drugged for the past 48 hours on YouTube. Now, who remembers when I told y'all? See, I, I, I'm a good predictor of what's about to happen on this damn platform because I've been here for a while, right? And I remember during 2020, all the celebrities were flooding here. I'm like, what the fuck are y'all flooding here for? Ain't y'all supposed to be rich? Oh, y'all are bored now because y'all can't go on tour. Y'all's not able to rap and act. Remember, every celebrity wanted a podcast. They wanted a YouTube channel. Hey, you guys, come follow me on YouTube. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. And we the people said, no, fuck y'all. We got our phase, okay? We got the folks who've been here from day one who are just like us. They're not walking around with diva attitudes and arrogance. We'll stick to watching them. So many of those people fell by the wayside. You notice a lot of them, they're not, they're not making their cooking videos no more. They're not doing hair tutorials. They're not doing makeup tutorials because nobody cared. We don't care. We, you know, YouTube was meant for just regular schmegler people. So... What I've noticed, though, there's there's a there's still a small sector that didn't leave. And one of those people who refuses to leave is Fat Joe. And I've asked y'all this a few times. I'm like, does he still make music or does he just sit online and gossip all day? Because to me, he's no different than what I do. You, you know, he just sits and spills and sips tea. You know, I thought he was, you know, part of Terror Squad. I'm like, what happened? He went from damn Terror Squad to the Tea Squad. All he does is gossip. Oh, you know what? And then I was thinking this. And then Kanye. And then I caught Nori. <laughs> so anyways, what I've noticed that all these, you know, these rappers who want to be podcasters and everything else, they're not telling us. They're not telling. No, not even us. But, you know, y'all, the, the fans of, of us on YouTube, they're telling y'all not to watch us. They're telling y'all to, you know, y'all better not support people like Charleston White. If not, we're not coming on your platform. So that was T.I. and Lil Boosie early in the week, threatening folks and saying, if you bring Charleston White on your platform, they won't come on your platform. Well, I don't want either one of y'all on my platform, so I don't give a damn. You know what I'm saying? Don't affect me. Um, so now Fat Joe is kind of taking the same stance. I want to play out this video of good old Jose. <laughs> Mr. Jealous One Still Envy. Sounds like you're jealous of us, Fat Joe. Okay? Sounds like you're the jealous one. Let me go ahead and play this clip. Let me uh, bring this in here. Give me just a second. Share my good old screen here. So this is Mr. Terror Squad himself. He decided to go on a rant against us innocent YouTubers. We're here minding our business, sipping tea, bringing the people what they want to see. And here comes Fat Joe. Can't really talk to people, especially intelligent people. And so they ask me all the time, uh, yo, what about these young rappers? What do you want me to tell these young rappers? If a young rapper comes to me and asks me for advice, I'm going to give him the greatest advice I have. Right? It's my, my job uh, to be transparent with the youth. Uh, but what can you tell these kids that no one gave them shit? No one gave a fuck about them. They came up from being broke and now they're rich and now they're successful and they did it on their own. You can't tell them what to do. Um, and it's crazy, right? Because I'm guilty. Sometimes I watch this YouTube and so what I know about YouTube is that they got guys on there that are absolutely nobody. But I mean nobody. I'm trying to figure out what's the criteria. Why have they done that? They produced this. You know, sometimes I'll be watching like reality shows. Love it, hip hop. And they got guys on there that I don't know what they did. On the TV show. And they're loving it. And I, 
it's blasphemy to tell me that these guys are like stars or they created. It's crazy. Let me pause this because he's going to rant for about five minutes. Let me come on real quick. Do y'all see the jealousy? Do y'all see the hate, the animosity? This man said it's blasphemy for y'all to be acting like YouTubers are real, you know, media people. It's blasphemy. A man who rapped about selling crack for years. We're, our fans are blasphemous. I see the eggs in the chat. Y'all are messy. Okay, y'all are very messy for them egg emojis. He's saying that it's blasphemy that us YouTubers are as big as we are and that we have a platform. But let me go ahead. We're going we gonna to let Jose finish. Come on, Jose. And I'm not calling out just that show because Moon Scott's a good friend of mine. Um, but when you look at YouTube, you really see some guys with anywhere from 20,000, 200,000, whatever views of people watching them. And we don't know if these guys are child predators or, or not. We don't know shit about these guys. Once again, it goes back to the shock value. If a motherfucker tell you, yo, I had dinner last night with an alien, he was sitting right here, and they keep saying incredible enough, confident enough, you start believing this guy hangs out with aliens. Let me pause it again and come back on the screen. So he's saying that, you know, we're basically doing too much as YouTubers. Um, you know, a lot of us are conspiracy theorists. Uh, yeah, I'm a big conspiracy theorist, honey. And if we say it enough, you know, you guys will start believing it. You're mad about us talking about aliens and conspiracies, but you and your rap cohorts literally rap about selling drugs, shooting other black people. You know what I'm saying? Put a, put a molly in her drink and she ain't even know it. Y'all rap about the most degenerate shit. Who, who vetted y'all? Y'all just showed up and was like, I'm a rapper. I said, a hip, hop, a hippie, the hippie, hip. Nobody vetted you. You just popped up on the scene. So what do you mean? Like, who, who's vetting us YouTubers? Nobody, this is YouTube. Nobody has to vet us. We just showed up one day, got a microphone because we had some shit to get off our chest. There's no vetting process. Is there a vetting process for rap? No. So it's, it's very funny that rappers can, you know, have all types of freedom of speech they can rap about all types of low vibrational shit, but where Fat Joe cuts it off is YouTubers talking about conspiracies and aliens and doing too much. But he doesn't have the same energy for his rap friends who rap about all types of low vibrational stuff. I find that very, 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 very suspicious, Jose. <laughs> and I do know, all right, it's an era where social media where everybody has an opportunity to be somebody and say whatever, but yo, you cannot be letting these morons take up time in, in your brain. Guys, you never accomplished nothing. We don't know who these guys are. And they up here criticizing and talking about shit. Who are you? No, sir. In my Rafiki voice, the question is, who are you? Who are you? You came here. You came to our platform to, to, to gossip and spill tea. And you got the nerd to be asking us who we are. No. Who are you, sir? Who are you? Okay. My thing is this. He seems to have a lot of vitriol for, for YouTubers, for people who have a voice. How do you come into the comment into the commentary game? And come at us and say that we shouldn't really have a voice to speak. And who do we think we are? But again, y'all came here. We didn't go into the rap space. I'm not over here at Hot 97 trying to kick a freestyle. This is what I do. I do commentary. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of guys and females on here who do commentary. And they do good commentary. And they don't have to explain that to you or anybody. This is just another angle of people trying to silence voices because now the people have a mic. Now the people can jump online and say, you know what, Fat Joe? Um, I didn't like your last album. You know what, Boosie, you're this. You know what, T.I., your son is this. 
They don't like the fact that regular people now have a platform. They can use their voice. They want gatekeepers. Let's keep it real. They want this industry gatekept. They don't want y'all to tell them nothing. They don't want y'all, unless you guys are giving them undue praises and sucking their pain, they don't want to hear it. The second you hold any of these rappers accountable for anything, then it's, boo, who are they? They're not vetted. They shouldn't even be allowed on the internet to have an opinion. Meanwhile, you know what's so funny and interesting? Shocker, guess what? You're on the internet spewing your opinion. Make it make sense. So the only person who can have an opinion is who, Fat Joe? Let's finish listening to what he got to say. Come on, Jose, let's go. And then he's not even good at you. See how he has to pause and read the comments? Just talk, sir. BJ, what's up, my brother? Who are these guys? What have you done? Nobody's having the, you know, Charles Barkley really was a 10 time all star. Shaq was the most dominant player of all time. Kenny the Jet Smith has championships. These guys are commentating a game that they know about, that they won, uh, they won on an elite they've done to be uh, criticizing music and albums and this and that. Yo, they gotta stop. And that's it. And those are legitimate guys. The YouTube don't know who they are. Anybody can come on there talking some type of crazy shit for you to listen to. Who are they? And you really believe in them. You keep looking at they shit. Yo, anybody telling me drop a cash app or some shit like that? Yo, get the fuck out of here, bro. Get a job. Oh, y'all be hating. You see how they hate on the regular people? Let me come back on my damn stream. You see how I knew it was going to boil down to something. He's telling on himself the jealousy be real. Y'all don't never see me out here talking about hit the cash apps and the cash app. People send cash apps and y'all know I am humble and I'm grateful and I try my best to read every cash app. I don't care if you send a dollar or a hundred dollars. These people are literally jealous because you got regular people who have created a lane for themselves and the people, the fans, you guys truly support and get behind us and they feel away. Because remember, before the internet, the voice of the so-called streets were rappers like Fat Joe and Lil Wayne and Jay-Z and things like that. So he's saying that really, unless you're famous, unless you've played basketball in the NBA or football in the NFL, you shouldn't have no opinion on sports. You shouldn't have a platform to say, hey, that move sucked or this person fumbled. You should just sit back and just, you know, sit back and shut the hell up. And only people in those fields should have an opinion. Sir, this ain't 1999, what the fuck? This is 2022. We are all allowed to have an opinion. Not saying that everybody's opinion is valid, but everybody's allowed to have one. And the reason why everybody's now on YouTube and on social media talking from their soapbox is because people in the industry gatekeeped, they were gatekeeping media for so long. You have to know somebody, know somebody, or suck somebody peeing to even get in the door. I've always wanted to do commentary since the time I was a kid. I was always, you know what I'm saying, talking about celebrity news and just news in general. But I couldn't walk into nobody's ABC studio or Fox or whatever, you know what I'm saying, and ask for a job. No, you got to climb the ladder. You got to apprentice. You got to be the coffee girl. You got to, you know what I'm saying, suck somebody peeing and, you know, climb up the corporate ladder. No, I decided to invest in my damn self and create my own platform. And I thought that's what it was about, being an entrepreneur and working for yourself and building up yourself, building up your own brand. But see, the problem is now this the legacy media and legacy entertainers, they have competition and they don't like that. That's the real tea. The fact that he's talking mess about super chats because nobody, because see, the problem is nobody sends them super chats. Because for the most part, nobody's going to send somebody who's already established and who's rich, okay? These millionaires who brag about bling and fur coats and Lamborghinis. The average person is not going to send Fat Joe or Lil Wayne or whoever a super chat. 
We'll sit and watch you on your live, little boosie. We'll sit and watch TI all day, but nobody's got to just sit there and drop them $100, 25 bucks. And they feel a way about that. But it's funny that the people who send us money, it's because we're broke and we're bums, but these same people buy your albums. So are they broken bums because they're putting money in your pocket? Some people say that rapping is not a real job. Some people feel like, you know what I'm saying? Why do rappers and entertainers get paid so much just to spit or just to act? When you have doctors and lawyers and teachers not even making a fraction of what entertainers make. Do we knock you? Do we say that you shouldn't have? No, we let you ride out and, you know what I'm saying, stunt and do what you want to do. But I find it very hypocritical that now they're mad because regular people are eating. We're going to go back and let me go ahead and play some more of what he had to say. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Motherfucker tell you enough. Y'all was with an alien. I was this and this. You'll fucking believe it. You talk about Kanye West, at least motherfucker, according to him, he's a billionaire. Eight billion, nine billion. He's done something. He's made some of the most incredible music. But these guys? Come on, you gotta be fucking kidding me, man. Watch your kids from watching these guys. I don't know who they are. Who are they? <sighs> So you want the parents to watch their children from watching people like me, Hassan Campbell, Ten Toes Down, DJ Academics, um, Armand Wiggins, uh, Sweet Ma for Life. You know, all the people who do commentary, Camille's Corner. You know what I'm saying? So so the, the parents, oh, think about the children. What about the children? Think about the kids. So you want the parents to not, you know, let the kids watch us, but you have no problem with these pa same parents buying concert tickets for their kids to come see you rap in concert, to come see Lil Boosie rap in concert, to come see Jay-Z and T.I. and all these rappers, okay, who rap about fuck shit. Not all the ones I mentioned, but you know, just in case, the SoundCloud rappers, the ones who rap about drugs and lean and having sex and all this crazy stuff. So the parents shouldn't protect their kids from that. It's us that they need protection from. That's bullshit, Fat Joe. That's bullshit. I see a lot of hateration. And then he said, well, Kanye's a billionaire. He's worth like $9 billion. He's made a lot of music. So he deserves a platform. He has the right to speak. Yeah, Kanye has the right to say whatever he wants to say. But why is it only predicated, why is it, why is it predicated that he can say what he wants to say because he's worth billions of dollars? Why is his opinion in his soapbox more valuable than mine? Because I'm not a billionaire. That's silly. I research, I drop knowledge, I help people. So you're not going to tell me that I'm not worthy of my platform because I'm not a billionaire or because I don't have some type of celebrity status or because I don't have a degree in journalism or because I don't work for the own network or whatever. It's just a bunch of jealousy is what I'm seeing. And it's really sad. Let me go ahead and play the rest. You take their words, these YouTube guys, and we don't know who they are, over people that you've known for 20, 30 years. I'm, so, I'm sorry I have to keep interrupting because this is so silly to me. You take YouTubers' words over people that you guys have known for 20, 30 years. We don't personally know you, Fat Joe. I know you from the song, What's Love? It's about, I mean, he got some bops, don't get me wrong. Okay? The Jose album was a banger, but we don't personally know you. I don't, I, you know, you've been in the game for 20, 30 years, but you've never done anything for me. You don't know me. You don't know my family. You don't know my, you know, what I go through my day-to-day -day struggle. This is insane. By that logic, then, are we not supposed to hold R. Kelly accountable because we've known him for 30 years? We don't know you guys personally. R. Kelly's been in the game for 30 years, and guess what R. Kelly was doing? He was hiding people in his house, making sex slaves out of them, and doing all types of crazy stuff. We don't personally know y'all. 
Just because you've been rapping for 30 years does not mean that we personally know y'all and does not mean that we have a personal interest in your voice or what you got to say about any said topic, sir. I'm just saying. That's insane. I've been here for 30 years, okay? <laughs> you know, one time I was watching YouTube and it was a Spanish dude. He was telling the story, yo, and Fat Joe and Jay-Z had a fight and Beyonce, they carried her down the stairs and Fat Joe fought the 100 guys and this, bro, sounded like the most amazing shit in the world. Here's the problem. I never met this guy in my life and everything he said was not true. But the biggest, he had me intrigued in the story. I would get him to write some shit. He's such a liar. Get your ass out of here, Joe. <laughs> Ooh, Fat Joe, man. He hotter than bacon grease. He said the guy had the story. He was so intriguing. He'd have him write some shit. It's funny. Like, granted, there's a lot of liars on YouTube. He ain't lying about that. There's bitches who just wake up and make up stuff, trying to go viral, trying to make a name for themselves, and all types of goofy stuff. So, yeah, you do got a lot of liars on this platform. But there's also a lot of liars, guess where? In hip hop. How many rappers have rapped about, oh, I did this in the streets and I was the man and I sold the most drugs and I have eight bodies. And then we find out Plies was a nurse. He was a registered nurse. You're literally rapping about your brother's life. You did none of that stuff in the streets. So a lot of people in hip hop tell fabricated stories of shootouts that never happened, of drug deals gone bad when all they did was, you know, buy weed from the weed man. You was never moving weight. You just had to tell a good story. Well, you got some of them people here on the internet as well, unfortunately. <laughs> so Fat Joe is upset. And I just find this very interesting. I feel like these rappers and a lot of these celebrities are starting to come at us here on this platform. And I don't like it. And I don't care what nobody says. I'm always going to ride for the YouTube platform itself. Maybe not YouTube because YouTube be doing some shady stuff, especially to my channel. But for this platform that has basically paved a way for so many people to eat, take care of their families, build some type of generational wealth, invest, you know, get them in front of people that they would never have access to. That's what it was about. It was for regular people who couldn't make it in the industry. You know what I'm saying? They either said you weren't good enough, you weren't light enough, you weren't pretty enough, you weren't tall enough. And so everybody took all of those rejections and they brought it here to this space. And we were able to create something out of that. So for these rappers who will be the first ones to cry about censorship, the second people are saying, your lyrics are terrible. You shouldn't be saying this. You shouldn't be talking about killing other black men. You shouldn't be talking about, you know, poisoning your own community. What's the first thing they say? Oh, y'all are trying to take my freedom of speech. Y'all are trying to teach, tell me how I should rap. You know what I'm saying? Y'all are trying to censor me. So it's very interesting that these rappers like Lil Boosie and others will cry about censorship. Lil Boosie was banned off for Twitter and Instagram, I don't know how many damn times, for him doing commentary and just acting a damn fool. And what was the first thing he was crying about? Censorship. Mark Zuckerberg, it ain't fair. Y'all are trying to censor me. I'm allowed to have an opinion. Mark Zuckerberg, let me get my account back. So it seems like when they're censored, we're all supposed to come and kumbaya, my Lord, kumbaya, and, and, and pray, and you know, oh, we're supposed to fight the white man to get Boosie his platform back. But as soon as they don't like something that somebody else is saying that's not a celebrity, now it's okay for them to come together like Voltron and say, y'all shouldn't listen to these YouTubers, y'all need to ban Charleston White, y'all better take down this interview. I don't like that. Because like I always say, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. So if y'all can get up here and, and shout y'all's opinion from the rooftop and have an opinion about everything under the sun, why y'all trying to then turn around and censor other people? Like I've always said from day one, the commentary game is not built for everybody. People try and get into the commentary space because they have an opinion. And what I never respect is people who want to do commentary and have an opinion about everything under the sun. 
But the second they're the subject of that conversation, it's an issue. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Like I said, I've never been bothered by people making videos, talking shit about me. I don't give a flying fuck. That is your energy. That makes me no difference. I'm going to still do me over here on this channel, okay? So my thing is you cannot sit here and have an opinion about everything under the sun. And then the second time I don't like you or they have an opinion about you, good or bad, because that's what comes with the territory, then you're crying foul. It doesn't work that way. You're better off ignoring that person because then eventually they'll get bored and go sit the hell down. So I, I, just, I just find it very interesting that some of the people who have talked the most bravado are some of the most sensitive when it comes to people talking about them. That doesn't make any sense. If anything, it's free advertisement. I love them, bitch, you talk about me. Good, put my name in the title, bitch. Bring more people to my channel because I'm never going to mention you. So why do they care if you're a celebrity and you're a big time rapper? Why do you care if some insignificant YouTuber is doing commentary about you or talking about you? When you're big and wealthy and you have all these connections, you really shouldn't care. Now, if they're just spewing nothing but lies, I get that. Then at that point, you know, that's, where, that's when the lawsuits come out. But if it's just somebody commentating on your bad behavior or maybe they don't like a song that you put out or the fact that your child is out here wiling, you don't have the right to then censor somebody, especially when you make music that some people see as a detriment to the culture. And not really Fat Joe. Fat Joe, I mean, besides a few times he's rapped about selling crack, most of his music, for the most part, has been fun and, you know, lighthearted. You know, I like Fat Joe's music. So I'm not going to take that from him, you know, but some of the other rappers. I find it very interesting. But, child, they drug him. The, the, the black hood section of YouTube, y'all know that hood section with all the black guys. They wasn't playing. They drug Fat Joe, drug him from, damn, they took him from the Bronx to Puerto Rico and back. They weren't playing with his ass. So he came back today with a part two. <laughs> he said he wanted to explain himself after he got drugged by the hood sector of YouTube. Them hood dudes ain't playing that shit. You ain't about to fuck up their bag. They ain't never seen this much money. Fat Joe. So the hood sector came together and drug him. So now this is what Fat Joe had to say earlier today. Let me share my screen real quick. All right, Jose. So what I had said the other day, I wasn't violating all YouTubers, because I watch YouTube. What I was asking was a clear question. Can anybody get on social media, get on YouTube, rock the bells, and just start talking about rappers and celebrities, families, any which way they want to, violate them, call them all type of stuff, and tell you about this, tell you about, bro. I don't know how to explain that. I mean, Fat Joe, whether you like him or not, you know this guy 30 years. Some of these guys you know for 30 years, you know, DJ Envy or Sean. Who are these guys that make them qualify to sit up in there? So now if we're looking at them like, yo, this is comedy, ha, 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 I get it. But to actually, every couple of months, some YouTuber dude comes out to the woodworks and he's more Looney Tunes than the last one. And, 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 and so, the wildest shit they say, the more you're going to click on it and think this, this, that. This ain't to stop their hustle. But this is to know who's valid. Who's valid? Just because you get on there and start talking wild shit about people, this, this, that. I don't know if you live in a barn. What kind of financial... Uh, <laughs> what kind of financial advice can I take from you? I don't know if you're living in a barn, a farm, the projects with a backdrop. Did it? You might be fucked up in your pockets, legendary, and you trying to give me some sort of advice? Now, I guess it's entertainment. That's cool. I get entertained sometimes. I watch this thing on YouTube where they talk about all the riots and fights in uh, Rikers Island. That's dope. So they show like a picture of Rikers Island. They get old school dudes to start talking about a war and this and that. You know, I get intrigued by that. I mean, a lot of us like, uh, you know, what they call that shit? Dirty TV or whatever it is. But sometimes, you know, I bug out. 
Because I'm a stand-up dude and, and, and I watch everything from YouTube to everything. If you're doing stuff, don't think I ain't seeing you. And when I see it, be like, yo, who's this dude? Like, like, do we even know this guy to be talking about somebody I know for 20 years? Who are these guys? I support the culture in every aspect. You know, I watch YouTube and I watch Math Hoffa and I love the way his shit is. That's why I went over there and sat in the hot seat and gave him a legendary interview. All right, sir. Bye. <laughs> All right, next. Hey, but Math Hoffa is a rapper too. So, I mean, you're acting like you went to like a regular YouTuber's platform. You went to another rapper's platform. Child. Anyways. Um, I just, I don't know. I just, I, I just felt a way, you know, like I said, I'm very protective of this platform. Um, not because of, you know, YouTube and the establishment, but the fact that this is a platform that was created initially for anybody. Right. And we're talking about regular people to have a space to not only do commentary and express themselves, but to make skits, to teach people how to do hair, how to do makeup, how to style clothing, how to fix cars how to go hunting, just all, you know, just a wealth of information. So I don't like this whole, I want to gatekeep me and me and my rapper friends that I've known 20, 30 years. We want to gatekeep who can be on this platform and who can have something to say that is BS. And that is censorship at its finest. And I'm seeing a lot of censorship going on. And that's the part that's very frustrating. You know, Everything from even the Kanye West interview, the whole Charleston White, T.I. and Boosie situation. And now you have Fat Joe trying to call out, you know, other YouTubers. And I believe the YouTuber he's like mad at or really has an issue with is Hassan, Hassan Campbell, you know. But again, why do you care? If you're booked and busy and rich, why are you on YouTube watching people that you deem is crazy and they believe in aliens? They're all crazy. Who are these crazy people? Well, if we're crazy, why are you watching us? Because there's a lot of crazy people on YouTube. And guess what? I don't know they exist because I don't watch them. I might run across it. I'm like, who the hell is this next? And I won't ever come back. I hit not interested. So they never come back in my feed. So you have to do. Why well, keep watching the crazies? So I, don't, I, I just, I hear a lot of jealousy. I think a lot of these rappers and a lot of these celebrities, not just the rappers, a lot of these celebrities too, they feel a way. Because you have a lot of people who've been able to eat off of this platform, make a name for themselves, build up themselves, and they didn't have to go through the industry. They didn't have to suck and fuck. Okay? They don't have a bunch of nudes on the internet. They're not on OnlyFans jerking off and doing all types of unbecoming things for a check. And I think it bothers some of these, and he's not a pseudo celebrity, he's very established, I'm not saying that, but some of like the reality TV show celebrities and things like that, you know how they try and talk mess, like all oh, these little YouTubers, these little bloggers. Yeah, these little bloggers keep a lot of y'all fed and in the, in the, in the algorithm. Because if it wasn't for these YouTubers talking about y'all and creating content about y'all, no one would be checking for y'all. So all that trying to talk down to the blogs and to, and to YouTubers, like you're way up here and they're down here, I think not. Because they seem to have all this love for legacy media and the white media, they support them. But when it comes to regular, you know, black entertainers, black, you know, social media people, black commentators, it seems to always be some type of issue. So I don't agree with that at all. I don't agree with that. So let me go ahead and read some of these super chats here. Cause I love my super chats. I shit. Fat Joe crazy as hell. Because if you get super chats, you're just a bum. Absolutely not. It means that these are people who rock with you and they're going above and beyond to prove that they rock with you so much so that they're taking money out their own pocket to support you. That means a lot. That is that 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 means so much when people are able to still support you, even with everything that's going on in the economy and everything else. So to sit there and try and clown that is silly. If anything, that those are your fans showing that they really support and they really love you. So you're silly for that. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.